a very good evening uh, to all the brothers uh, in Christ. Uh, so, last uh, few days uh, we have been studying, uh, you see, uh, the subject about our human soul. So, what happens to human soul? So, we have seen what does the Bible say about the human soul that uh, it is not uh, immortal but uh, it uh, dies. So, we also saw then what is the meaning of soul from the Bible and uh, uh, along with that one, we have seen uh, what is the meaning of uh, uh, soul uh, and uh, uh, body plus spirit uh, is the soul. So, and later on, we also seen uh, uh, various uh, uh, scriptures uh, which clearly prove that after death there is nothing. So, until a man comes back to the resurrection, there is no part for him. So, whatever things that are done in uh, you see, in this earth. So, uh, there are some scriptures uh, which uh, give us the idea. Uh, you see, that the soul doesn't uh, die. The soul is immortal. It goes here and there and all. So, today, we are going to see those scriptures particularly, those incidents uh, where this uh, is recorded to us in the Bible. And... Uh, let us see, how does it match with the uh, uh, doctrines of the Bible which we have studied till now? Okay, so there are nearly 7 to 8 incidents. So, we won't be able to cover up the uh, entire thing today itself. So, but a uh, few of the things, uh, whichever is possible, we try to cover up. And the first such incident is from book of uh, Samuel, <clears throat> 28 chapter, where King Saul went and uh, sought a witch uh, from Endor and she rose up uh, to see the dead uh, Samuel uh, back to life. So, let us read this incident actually what happened. So, if you read uh, 1 Samuel 28 chapter, you see it clearly says that uh, the situation was that the Philistines were ready to come and attack uh, the people of Israel and King Saul was the king, you see. And uh, usually what the king used to do in Israel is that uh, whenever the enemies come to attack, uh, they usually used to contact God and find out uh, whether to go to war or not. So hence, uh, seeing this huge army, King Saul feared uh, a lot. Uh, it's given in uh, 1 Samuel 28, chapter 4 and 5. So what uh, uh, Sam, uh, King uh, uh, Saul uh, uh, did is was that he tried to inquire of the Lord whether to go for war uh, or not. But unfortunately, God did not answer him at all, neither by prophets or by Urim or Turim. Okay. Uh, can somebody read First Samuel 28 6? First Samuel 26. Okay, Ganesh Pada. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by uh, Urim, nor by prophets. Very good. Brother. So, Lord answered him not, uh, neither by dreams or Urim, uh, nor by the prophets. So, God did not answer uh, King uh, Saul at all. And, uh, you know, by that time, Samuel the prophet was already dead. Uh, so, there was no, you see, Samuel the prophet also to go and inquire what the Lord would do to him. You see, and uh, uh, let us read verse 3. Verse 3. Uh, okay. Now Samuel was dead and all his had visited him and buried him in Ramaha, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those uh, that he had familiar spirit and the uh, wizard out of the land. See, and uh, Samuel was dead uh, by this time and uh, Lord did not answer him in any way. And the one thing that is recorded here is that uh, Saul had put away all the people who were doing witchcraft, uh, you see, out of uh, the land of Israel. This was uh, as per the command which God had given in the law. Lord, I told anybody seeking uh, familiar spirits is trying to speak with the dead. Uh, 
they should be put out and killed in the land of Israel. So God did not answer King Saul at all. Why? Because King Saul was disobedient to God in two incidents. As he was disobedient to God in the two incidents, Lord rejected him. Now, which is the first incident? Can, does anybody remember? Why did God uh, reject uh, King Saul? What are the two incidents? What are the two mistakes that King Saul did? Anybody? Who can answer? Binod brother? Shaiji brother? Stephen brother? Abhishek brother? What is the mistake which Samuel uh, Saul did? Huh? Oh, okay. Let us read First Samuel thirteen thirteen. Stephen, brother, can you read First Samuel thirteen thirteen? Stephen, brother, you are there. Okay, Sajid, brother, can you read? Ah, oh, yes, brother. And. Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Ah, you see, thou hast done foolishly. So, Saul was told to wait till Samuel comes, but before Samuel comes, uh, Saul offers sacrifices to God to please him. So that was a disobedience to God. And the second such incident was when he was told to kill all the Amalekites. But what did King Saul do? King Saul spared all the animals and King Agag alive. This was, you see, very, very displeasing to Lord. 1 Samuel 15, chapter 22 and 23. Say, Buddha, read with her, please. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. See, thou hast rejected the word of God, hence God has rejected you to be the king of Israel. Because he was disobedient in a uh, not killing King uh, Agag, the Amalekite. Hence, uh, God withdrew the support uh, to King Saul. Instead, I uh, choose David. So, since then, what happened? If you see, the evil spirit actually troubled King Saul. And God's spirit had le left him. First Samuel 16.14. Say, uh, please read. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And the evil spirit from the Lord had troubled him. So, by this time, God had actually rejected, uh, you see, King Saul. Now, what uh, King Saul is doing is that against the will of God, he is trying to Contact somebody from the dead and speak to the dead. Now, what did the Bible say? What did the law say? You see, law said to kill all these familiar spirits, uh, the people who are doing witchcraft. And when King Saul was a good uh, king, he had actually obeyed, uh, you see, uh, God's government and he had uh, cast off uh, all the people who are doing witchcraft in Israel. That is what we read uh, in uh, verse uh, 6 also. But again it is given in verse 7. Now against uh, God's will, what King Saul did was that he went and sought uh, for a, you see, woman 
who could speak to the dead. First Samuel 28.7. Read verse 7, brother. First Samuel 28.7. Shall I? <clears throat> then said ah. Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit as Endor. At ah, Endor. At Endor. See, this was against uh, God's commandment. Uh, when he was obedient, he had uh, himself cast off all such women. But now, as God had left him, you see, now he is uh, violating God's ways and uh, going and seeking uh, a woman having evil spirit. What did God tell to the people of Israel? You see, God told, you shall not have any such people in the land. Deuteronomy 18 chapter 9 to 12. Deuteronomy 18 chapter 9 to 12. Uh, Stephen, brother, please read. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to 12. Deuteronomy 18, 9, 9 to 12. Ah. When thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of the times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. You see, what does it clearly say? The law clearly said that those shall not have any such people who do witchcraft, consult with the familiar spirits, you see, necromancers, all these are abomination. Those should cast away out from the promised land before the face of the Lord. Hence, Saul, when he was obedient, he did this one. But now God has left him. Philistines are coming to attack. You don't know what to do. So he wants to know what actually would happen in the war. Hence, he went and meets this woman of Endor who does a witchcraft. You see, this was totally against the Lord's will, okay? Now, as he went, the woman asked her, okay, what do you want? Then immediately King Saul said, please bring me up, you see, dead Samuel. I want to speak to him. Read 1 Samuel 28.11. Binod Buddha. Okay, sir. Uh, 1 Samuel 28.11. Uh, then said the woman, Who shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Bring me up uh, Samuel. Then what happens? Uh, you see, woman does uh, some uh, you see, magic, magic and all. Huh? You see, then what happened? Uh, huh? She saw God's ascending from earth, it seems. Read with the verse 13, brother. Huh? Uh, 13 also. Ah. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, but what sweets thou? And the woman said unto Saul, Saul, I saw God ascending out of the earth. Ah, what did she tell? She said, I am seeing God's ascending out of the earth. Now where are God's? Are they under the earth? Uh, that they will come from the earth. They should be in heaven, no? But here she says, gods are ascending from earth. Okay. Now next what happened? You see, now a person comes, you see, then Saul is very curious. Saul asks, oh, who is that uh, man who is coming up? Uh, please describe him. That immediately, you see, the woman uh, tells uh, the description of the man who is uh, Coming up, she tells, uh, I see a old man, you see, uh, covering with a full mantle, you see. And uh, King Saul, you see, jumped to a conclusion without even seeing uh, the person who was coming back uh, 
there saying that it is a dead Samuel. Read verse 14 also, brother. Okay. Uh, 14 also. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh of, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stopped with his face to the ground and howled himself. Ah, you see, what did uh, she say? Saul asked, uh, what are you saying? Please tell me, what is the form? But here you observe, Saul did not directly see Samuel. She was the one who described uh, him. She said, uh, I see a old man covered with robe. And immediately, King Saul come to a conclusion saying, and he assumed that this person should be Samuel. While he did not see him directly at all. You see? And uh, you see, uh, what happens next? Uh, uh, next, uh, see, this is clear proof. Uh, see, Samuel was not seen directly by King Saul. Okay? Because the woman described, uh, this is just wearing a robe, a old man. And do you think uh, a old man wearing a robe uh, is uh, all the persons who are wearing a robe with a old man? Is it uh, Samuel? No. So, woman gave the description. So, he came to a conclusion. Next, what happened? Uh, huh? Next, uh, read uh, verse 15. Verse 15, brother. Huh? And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me? To bring me up. Mm, you see? Then Samuel said, Why have you disturbed me? That you bring me up. Oh, that means a witch can disturb prophet Samuel's sleep. Huh? Then uh, she asked Samuel, uh, now speaks to King Saul. You see? You remember when uh, Samuel was alive, he did not go to speak to Saul once he was rejected until his death. He did not go and speak at all. But now, the person who was not speaking to huh? Saul is again speaking to King Saul, it seems. Sir. Read brother, verse 16, brother, Stephen, brother. Huh? Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and is become thine enemy? Ah, you see, he is uh, clearly telling, why are you coming and asking me when God has uh, himself departed from you and he has uh, rejected you, you see, has become uh, your enemy, why are you asking me? So, even then, you see, the pretended, uh, you see, uh, Samuel, he tells uh, one prophecy. What does he tell? Verse 19. Ganesh Brother, you there? Ganesh Brother, verse 19, you can read. Okay, thank you. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel, Israel with thee into the hand of the Palestinians and to morrow shall through and they, their sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the last of Israel into the hand of Palestinians. You see? Palestinians. Palestinians. Now, you see, the person who came he tells her uh, tomorrow war will happen with Israel, but Israel will lose the war. What will happen is him, sir? You and all your sons, uh, you she know, shall be with me. Israel shall be delivered to the hands of Philistines. No, okay. If this person who came back to life and spoke to King Saul was really, you see, uh, that uh, really the Samuel was dead, and uh, Samuel's prophecy about the war should have been fulfilled 100 out of 100 percent. Isn't it? You see, but here if you observe and study, you see, that prophecy was not completely fulfilled. Now, what did the, you see the dead Samuel say? Tomorrow, you and all your sons, you see, shall be with me. Now, as uh, told, Actually, war happened. But not all the sons of, uh, you see, King Saul were dead. Uh, you see, 
वन पर्सन वॉज अलाइव रिसी रीड फर्स्ट सैम्यूल फिफ्टीन थर्टी फाइव बता फर्स्ट सैम्यूल फिफ्टीन थर्टी फाइव हु कैन रीड and samuel came no more to see saul until the day of his death nevertheless samuel mourned for saul and the lord repented that he had made saul king of israel ah so lord repented that he had made a king ah uh, uh, saul as the king of israel read brother now what happened in the war how many of the sons of uh, saul died And how many were alive? First Samuel thirty-one six. First Samuel thirty-one six. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor bearer, and all his men that same day together. Ah, you see how many sons died, Simsa. You see the three sons of Saul died, and all his men. it doesn't say all the sons were uh, dead uh, you know because one son actually lived and he ruled over israel for two years read second samuel 210 brother second samuel 210 me yeah anybody ishbosheth saul's son was 40 years old when he began to reign over israel and reigned two years but the house of juda followed david you see what happened is him sir ishbosheth was alive he ruled in israel for two years it seems sir that means as uh, told by the prophet here it was not fulfilled 100 out of 100% percent uh, Dear then, one person was there. He was alive, and he ruled for two years. After that one only, okay, he was he was dead, and uh, his kingdom was taken over by a king. Uh, you see, David. Okay, now if this is really the dead Samuel, the prophet Samuel, who really was God's so holy prophet, if it is really his soul that came back to life. Uh, then surely the prophecy of uh, samuel should have been 100% sure 100% to 100% pakka fulfillment should be there but uh, was it fulfilled no one son was alive you see you read in the bible god's prophecy are always very very fulfilled exactly to the point not even a point here and there you see like for example God prophesied about Jezebel that uh, where she shall die, that uh, she shall die in the Jezreel. You see where the dogs would come and uh, lick. Uh, you see her uh, blood uh, and heat her uh, body. So this was exactly fulfilled to the point to point. He, she fell at the same place where Naboth was killed. At the same place. Uh, You see, as uh, God told, the dogs came and licked. Uh, isn't it different? So this is God's prophecy. God doesn't do any partial prophecy. Some people know uh, if uh, somebody tells anything good about them, even if ten percent is fulfilled, they are so much happy. You see, but God is not like that. God says hundred percent, and fulfillment is also hundred percent. That is, uh, you see. the biblical prophecies hence uh, this one was actually you see imitated uh, you see by the devil himself you see okay <clears throat> how can the devil uh, uh, satan forecast the future with us yes everybody can forecast the future now imagine huh? who has left king saul god himself has left the king saul now if such a person Who doesn't have favor of God? <laughs> If he goes to war, what will happen? Naturally, he will lose. The, that is what has happened here. And for this one, some prophecy is required. Ah, not at all required, dear brethren. You see, see certain bits of things we can also guess uh, a future. Okay, like for example, a government when is come to power, they make a five-year plan, a budget, isn't it? 
So based on that uh, five-year plan only, almost all activities will be uh, simultaneously covered. You see, so they guess the future for five years. Uh, does it mean they are prophets? Uh, does it mean that it's, it's gods, this one? No, not 100% of the uh, budget or whatever they forecast uh, is fulfilled, but partially at least some things are fulfilled. Like for example, you know, tomorrow, uh, uh, if a if uh, I tell you to tell your itinerary tomorrow, tomorrow schedule, your schedule, you see, who can tell that? Uh, you see? Yes, we can also tell our sh schedule, but how many, how much of it will be fulfilled? Uh, not 100%. Uh, you see, some, uh, at least 80 to 90 percent will be fulfilled. Uh, like for example, if you ask, brother, what is your tomorrow? Uh, what will happen in your life tomorrow? I will clearly tell what will happen in my life tomorrow. See, tomorrow I will wake up at uh, 4 o'clock, you see. Then uh, 5 o'clock I will take a service uh, subject to the brethren. Then after at 1 till uh, 5.30, uh, 6.30, that uh, prayer will go. Then 7 o'clock uh, we will prepare the for the Sunday service. Then uh, we will gather all together uh, for a Sunday Ecclesia gathering at uh, 10 o'clock. Then prayer and all will be over by 12.30. You see, all brothers and sisters will depart. Then uh, I'll have my lunch, take a little bit rest. Then evening uh, again, we'll have the class. One class at 5 o'clock, one class at 6 o'clock, one class at 8 o'clock. After all these things, we go to bed. Again, Monday morning, early morning, I wake up. See, whatever I have told about my life, you see, will it be fulfilled? Yes. At least 90% of it, will it be fulfilled if you see, yes, it will be fulfilled. Does it mean that we are prophets of God? Not yet, brother. See, based on our trend, we can guess to a certain extent that uh, these things will happen. And uh, these things really happen. And no one required for any prophecy or anybody to come and tell. And moreover, you see, in King Saul's case, uh, you see, God has rejected him. Sayadhan also knew very well. If God has rejected a person, if he goes to war, what will happen? He will not win. He will definitely lose. There is no doubt at all. You see, King Saul himself knew that if he goes to war, he will lose it. Hence, he wanted to know. Really, I want to lose or not? That's what the devil spoke. That's all. Okay. This is not, you see, the God's holy prophet Samuel coming back to life. Because... Nobody can come back to life until Christ comes a second advent. Here, first point to be observed is that Saul did not see Samuel at all. You see, the woman was the one who described it based on her description. He guessed this is Samuel. Why? Everybody, you see, whoever wears the robe, is it Samuel? No? Isn't it? Every old person is Samuel. Okay, no. You see, she guessed, uh, gave some description and he guessed it. And moreover, do gods come uh, from earth? Uh, they are in heaven, no? And prophecy, uh, are God's prophecies uh, uh, just partially fulfilled? No. It is fulfilled 100 to 100 percent. Then, then, how did, uh, uh, you see, a devil show a uh, person coming back, uh, you see? Coming uh, from the earth, how did uh, the, he show it uh, visually? You see, dear brethren. See, nowadays we have the technology of hologram. See, this is the hologram technology. Just by putting a magnetic uh, electronic gadget uh, on the body and uh, awning it, exactly our duplicate will stand next to it. Does it mean it's a real one? No, it's a technology, hologram technology. You see, and the laser technology on a naked uh, sky. Pictures are shown. You see, dear brethren, this technology we have it without now. But Satan, you see, he is the father of life, the prince of the power of the air. He has all these technologies even from before. So it is not a great thing to show something with uh, visual and sound effect. But the fact is that. The things are not 100% fulfilled as told by God. This itself is a clear proof that here, dead, you see, 
Samuel never came back to life. Because when God says that you should not contact the person who speak to dead, you see, it can't be that dead are somewhere, you see, and they will come back to life. It is purely the work of the devil, you see, to deviate from a real truth. Therefore, the Bible says the soul dies. Hence, God knew that the soul dies. The people of Israel also knew. Hence, God told, you should never speak to all these persons. Because if you go and speak, who will actually speak? You think that the dead person will speak, but actually it will be the devil who is speaking through them. Okay? So, this is the first point. Now, second incident is Moses and Elia coming and speaking to Jesus. Okay? Let us read Matthew 17 chapter verse 1, 2 and 3. Matthew 17 chapter verse 1, 2 and 3. Ah, Shaji brother, can you read? And after six days, Jesus take up Peter, James, and John his brother and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Ah, you see? What happened in this episode? Jesus took Peter, James and John to the mountain. Jesus was uh, transfigured, that is light, shining like a bright light. And Moses and Elia were talking to him. Okay. Now, immediately Peter reacts and tells, uh, Lord, give us the permission to build, the, build uh, three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elia. Okay. Now, how did Peter recognize that uh, who is Elia? And who is Moses? How did uh, the disciples recognize that? Who were Elia and who were uh, Moses? Tell me. How did Peter uh, recognize? Did uh, Moses and Elia put any ID card? How? Uh, tell Shaiji brother. Tell me. How? Binod brother. No idea brother. No idea. Okay. Ganesh brother. Binod brother. Stephen brother. Try to guess. No, How did... No, uh, no idea. No idea, okay. Ganesh brother, any idea? Sorry, sir. No idea. Okay. Binod brother? Okay. I'll give you the clue. It's in it's in third verse. Who can tell me? Just read the third verse and uh, tell me. Who can tell me by reading the third verse? Please read verse 3 with us. Verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them more and they are talking with you. Hmm. How do they recognize? Huh? You know how? By them talking to Jesus. That means what? Moses and Elia would have come. They would have had conversation with the, uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus would have tell, Oh, what Moses? How are you? So similarly, he would have told Elia, how are you? Or something like that. Jesus would have... You see, huh? mentioned their name and spoken to them. That is how the disciples scientified, oh, oh, this is Elia, this is Moses. Okay, now, if the Bible tells that the dead are really dead, they can't come back to life until the second advent of Jesus, how come Moses and Elia appeared to Jesus here? How come Moses and Elia appeared with Jesus in this incident? Binod brother, you are there? How did Moses and Elia appear? Binod brother? Okay. Read verse 9. The answer is given in verse 9. Binod brother, can you read verse 9? You are there? Okay. Okay, Stephen, brother, can you read verse 9, brother? And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Ah, tell the vision to no man. That means, what Jesus showed to the disciples here was not a real thing. It was a 
vision vision means what real thing ah uh, no dear brother you see huh vision i also saw one vision you know in my vision who oh i saw i saw moses in my vision i have seen abraham in my vision i have seen daniel i have seen joseph i have seen lot of uh, you see the biblical people in my vision i have seen even jesus also what vision tell me what vision ha eh? television what vision television ha eh? they say no ha ah, i saw a darshan ha ah? what darshan doordarshan television you see those days there was not technology so only vision was there but today what is there technology with vision is called as television you see so you come to me i will show you all this uh, persons on my tv ha eh? so vision is not a real thing so today also if you play moses film you can see you can see moses joseph abraham adam everybody you can see does it mean that they really come back to life ah no dear brother this is a vision we have seen so many visions in the bible is it it daniel second chapter we have seen a vision no you see the king and daniel saw a multi metallic image structure you see in book of zechariah we seen visions You see, again in Daniel seven chapter, there is a vision of four beast. Is it literal? Ah, the four beast literally came out. Ah, no, dear brother. And so this is a vision. Vision is never a real thing. Hence, this uh, is not a proof that uh, Moses and Elia literally came back to life. Okay, so this can be taken as a proof that the soul. is immortal soul doesn't die this is only a vision okay okay then now the next incident is the thief on the cross isn't it how did the thief go what did jesus tell to the thief ha huh? let us read uh, stephen brother please read luke 2343 brother and jesus said unto him verily i see unto thee Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Ah, oh, Jesus said unto the thief, "Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today only you shall be with me in paradise." So many people, you see, based on the scripture, they say, "Oh, thief! On the very day he repented and went to paradise along with Jesus." So you also can repent today. You can go to heaven even by repenting at the last moment. Oh, very good. Okay, now Jesus died on the cross. Then what happened after Jesus' death? What happened? Did Jesus immediately go to heaven? Tell me, did Jesus immediately go to heaven, or was he in the grave for three days? Are right. simple question I'm asking. After death of Jesus, where was Jesus? He was in the grave. Three days. Isn't it? Read Acts ten forty. Acts ten chapter verse forty. Binod Buddha, are you there? Yes, sir. Ah, please, Buddha, read Acts ten chapter verse forty, Buddha. He got raised up the third day and showed him openly. See, third day only Jesus is there. If he himself has not gone to heaven the very same day, how can I tell to the thief that you shall be with me in paradise the same day? Isn't it not? So Jesus Himself did not go. How can I tell to the thief that you will be with me? Okay. First thing. Now, the second thing. Did the thief ask for the forgiveness from the Lord? No. Did he ask for forgiveness of sins? No. Did he repent from his mistake? No. No. Such scripture is given there. You can read in your home. The thief never repented nor sought for forgiveness. Many people use this example and tell, even if you repent today, God is forgiving you. You will be saved the very moment. Are there? If the salvation was so free and so easy, dear brethren, we also can close all our Bibles because by the time we die, last moment, at least five ten minutes before, or even few seconds before, we will come to know. At that moment, we can also cry like the thief and say, "Oh Lord, please forgive my sins." The Lord will easily forgive our sins and immediately take us go to heaven. This is God's plan. Ah, can somebody go to heaven in such easy way? Ah, what does the Bible say? 
how we need to attain the heavenly salvation how are we saved read acts 14:22 read brother acts 14:22 confirming con confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god how do we enter the kingdom of god just by repentance and last moment no 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 through much tribulation underline it through much tribulation we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling not just repenting at the last moment dear brethren so if that was the case why should we struggle a lot we can also enjoy our life and live a comfortable life at the last moment we can repent and go to god that is not what the bible teaches dear brethren this is what some people misunderstand the scriptures twisting it interpreting a very wrong way okay now first of all what did the thief ask what was the question of the thief huh? you see let us read what was the question of the thief luke 2342 binod brother read verse 42 brother <coughs> okay uh, and he said on unto jesus lord remember me when the come into thy kingdom uh, did he ask for forgiveness brother did he repent no nothing is given what did he say lord please remember me when you come into my kingdom correct no when you come into your kingdom okay now you tell me what would have been the proper answer of jesus for this question of the thief say remember the thief asked lord please remember me when you come in thy kingdom okay now for this question okay what should be the proper answer of the lord what 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 should be the proper answer of the lord he requested jesus to remember him now what should jesus say tell me you're all there sage brother binod brother ganesh brother stephen brother please reply what is the proper answer for this question from bible brother next word no generally if somebody asks you to remember something what will be the general reply now you now you love, like for example you will tell brother raju tomorrow if i come to your house please remember this thing now what should my reply be okay i'll remember yes okay i'll remember that's a simple answer no that is the exact answer what we should give similarly when a thief asked jesus to remember the correct answer would actually be yes i will remember correct no ha huh? the thief asked remember me jesus should have simply answered yes okay i will remember you but instead of that one what was the reply of jesus read verse 43 now read verse and, 43 and jesus said unto him verily i say unto thee today shall thou be with me in paradise ah uh, instead of answering that one jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee today you see shall thou be with me in paradise no everybody think that jesus actually promised the thief that today only you will be with me in paradise okay actually you know there is actually a small punctuation mark here you see we can uh, see in this slide you see there is a punctuation mark huh now where is the punctuation mark in the bible huh say you brother where is the punctuation mark there is a comma no in the sentence where is the comma uh, after today after today today aha uh -huh. correct no that means what after today means sir huh? verily verily i say unto thee today huh? verily verily i say unto thee today correct ah huh? huh? wait i'll open my bible also look 23 huh? 23 43 uh other stephen mother where is the punctuation in your bible open the bible and see
Stephen Mudder. Open. Everybody open your Bible, not from the screen. Please open your Bible and say, Binod Brother, read from your Bible. Ganesh Brother. Brother, I use the uh, mobile Bible actually. Uh, oh, you using the mobile? Yes. Okay. Yes. Anybody who is having the Bible? Stephen Brother. Brother Binod. Brother Ganesh. Oh, nobody has the Bible. Luke 23, 40. Yes, 23, 43. Okay. Luke 23, 43. Here it is written. Here. Read a little bit louder, brother, please. And Jesus. As Ganesh Jesus said to him. As Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Where is the comma? comma. Is it after today or before today in the Bible? Uh, there is no comma in the KJV after today. After? Today, there is no comma in the KJV. Where is the comma? I asked. Not at where doesn't is the comma. Where is the comma, brother? Verily I say unto thee, comma. Ah, comma. That is that means comma is before today, correct? No. Yes. Your reply yes. should be very clear. Then only I can teach you properly. See, I need to understand how much you all understand. Okay, then only I can teach you properly. So I expect proper, clear answers for everybody. Please open your Bibles, look into your Bibles and see where is the comma. It clearly says, Verily I say saying to thee, Kama, correct? Huh? Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Correct now? Correct now, everybody? Yes. Sir. Yes. So the Kama yes, is not after today. The Kama is before today. Correct? Yes. Sir. Yes. Now, just if somebody is good at English, the Kama before today and the Kama after today usually makes a huge difference. Correct now? Yes. How, how difference it makes? See, if you put the comma, you see, before today, you know what it means? It means, I'll read, read the verse for you. This is the way you should read the Bible, loudly and very clearly. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now, if you read this way, the comma before today, you know what it means? It means Jesus is saying to the thief, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, this is what is printed in the Bible. Now, you just put the comma after today and read. Stephen, brother, read. Put the comma after today and read loudly and clearly. Where we are shown to thee, today, Shall thou be with me in paradise? No. Read it again clearly. You are expert in English. So you should be reading it very aptly. No, what exactly, verily I say unto thee, is a comment. Ah. Today is an adverb. No. Shall thou be with me in paradise? No. Paradise I... is the place. Mm. Okay. Shall I'll thou read be for you. you. Okay, mm. listen, I'll read for you. How different it makes, you just observe it. Okay, brother? See. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, Shall thou be with me in paradise? Now what is the meaning? What is the difference between what I read before and what I read now? Did you observe? I will read again. Everybody please concentrate. Jesus Sorry, said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. That is what printed in the Bible. But if you put the comma, after today and read, you know, what does it come? Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, Shall thou be with me in paradise? You know, what is the meaning? The first thing, what Jesus was telling is that, Today only you will be with me in paradise. How is this possible? Jesus himself did not go to paradise the very same day. Jesus did not go to heaven on the very same day. How can he make a false promise to the thief? 
So the punctuation mark should actually be after today. And what meaning comes if you put the punctuation mark after today is that Jesus says to the thief, today I am telling you, today itself I am telling you that you will be with me in paradise. That means what? I am saying you today, I am making this promise to you today that you will be with me in paradise. Not that you will be with me this very same day in paradise, you see, but I am making the promise to you today. This is the difference. Dear brethren, for your kind clarification, actually this punctuation mark, the comma, full stop, the chapter division, verse division and all is not there in the original Bible at all. You see, original Bible doesn't have all these things at all. This was put by the translators only after 14th century. Until then, there was no comma, no full stop, anything. So, just by putting the comma here and there, it makes a lot of difference, dear brethren. So, Jesus actually promised the thief saying, Today, I'm telling you, today I'm telling you, you will be with me in paradise. So, it has got a lot of meaning changes. Like for example, you see, uh, see just see the difference of comma. Oh, comma makes a difference in English. You see, English is very, very important if you put the punctuation. So, the meaning changes drastically. You know, uh, <clears throat> the same thing actually the devil did uh, to Garden of Eden. To whom? Uh, to Eve. What did God say? Uh, you shall not eat the fruit thereof. If you eat the fruit thereof, what will happen? What will happen? What did God say? Read Genesis 2.17. Uh, read brother. Genesis 2.17. Read brother. Genesis 2, uh, but of, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. See, thou shalt surely die. Now, this sentence, Satan changed only by adding a small word. What is the word that he added? And what did he, how did it change by just adding one word? Read Genesis 3 4. Genesis 3, 4, brother. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall surely die. Ah, you shall surely die. die. You are you're seeing the screen and reading. Now read. No, not. <laughs> oh, you're sorry. You shall not. <laughs> Why did you do that trick then? <laughs> uh, so I am observing who is opening the Bible and reading. <laughs> now read, brother. You shall not surely die. See, the word not. Huh? What changes No, You just one word not. It changed the entire meaning. You see, thou shall surely die, thou shall surely not die. Just one word not, dear brethren. So similarly, we see, we have seen and heard this story. I'll tell you the story. Once uh, there was a judge, Simsa. He was giving a judgment for a culprit. Okay, he, he made a judgment uh, below the typist for typing it himself. The judge pronounced a judgment telling, kill him, not spare him. That means what? The judge actually told, kill him, don't spare him, kill him, comma, not spare him. But the typist, while typing, he made a small mistake. You know what is the mistake? He put the comma after not. Instead of before not. Now what happened? The sentence itself changed. See, so I'll tell you. Kill him not. Comma. Spare him means what? Don't kill him. Leave him. You see? Just one comma here and there. Same sentence. You see? Just put the comma before not and read. That means kill him. You put the comma after not and read. It means, you see, not kill him. Leave him. The matter of life and death in small comma. This is what has happened in the thief. You see, dear brethren, the thief on the cross. The original Bible doesn't have any comma, any full stop, nothing is there. All these things are added by the translators only in 1551 century. Until such thing, there was no... Okay. Now, why did Jesus give such a favor to the thief? You see, because... 
on the cross, nobody comforted Jesus, but at least the thieves told some few comforting words. That was very comforting to Jesus. Hence, Jesus said, as he requested, I will surely remember you, you see, in my kingdom. But instead of saying this one, Jesus put it forth in a different way, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, today, you shall be with me in paradise. Now you tell me, paradise means what? Who will answer? Paradise means what? Where is paradise? Nobody has seen paradise. Nobody knows about paradise. Kingdom huh? of God. Ah, tell me, Ganesh Vidar. Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Eden. You see, actually, that is the real meaning. But everybody thinks paradise means heaven. Huh? That the thief went to heaven. Did Jesus uh, promise a uh, thief heaven? No, dear brother. See, for the Bible, Bible is his own dictionary. If you have any question from the Bible, we need to search only from the Bible. Then only we will get the proper meaning. See, we should not take one scripture and build a whole theory. See, how have we studied the subject of soul? We haven't taken one scripture. We have taken the entire scripture from the whole Bible and brought it to a single picture. Then only we are able to understand the subject of soul. Similarly, paradise means what? Uh, we need to search from the Bible. Now, where is it given in the Bible? Read Revelation 2.7. Binod Budar, you are there? Yes, sir. Good. Revelation 2.7. You understanding, brother? You following up? Yes, sir. Please. Revelation 2.7, brother. Huh? That hath uh, and here, here, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the sources. To him that overcomes will I give to it of the tree, uh, tree of life, which is the midst of the paradise of God. Ah, you see? I will give to it of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, in this paradise, what is there, it seems, sir? Which tree is there? The tree of life. Very good. Tree of life. Now, you tell me, where was the original tree of life? Where do we read in the Bible? The tree of life was there? In the Garden of Eden. Yes, in the Garden of Eden. Where is it given? Read Genesis 2.9. Huh? And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also mm. in the midst of the garden mm. and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Ah, the tree of life also in the middle of the garden. That means the tree of life in the middle of paradise of God is the garden of Eden. You know, actually that word paradise from the Greek word, it is paradios. You know what is the meaning of it? Paradios means park. That is the way Eden Park was there. Eden Garden was there. In the Eden Garden only, the tree of life was there. Now, Jesus promised the same thing to the, you see, thief. What did the thief request? When you come into your kingdom, please remember me. Jesus said, yes, I will remember you. Because when I come back, the second coming, this earth will be like a beautiful garden of Eden. You see, as it was in the garden of Eden, the same conditions will be restored. So, I will remember you when I come in my kingdom. That's what Jesus said. Paradise means not heaven, dear brethren. It is not at all heaven. It means the garden of Eden, the garden of Eden condition. The whole world will be made a beautiful garden of Eden condition. At the second advent of Jesus. Now, why is so special favor to the thief? Because what did Jesus say in Matthew 10 42? Read, brother, Matthew 10 42. Sajju, brother, can you read Matthew 10 42? Oh, yes, brother. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little one, a cup of cold water only, in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. You see, Jesus said, if anybody gives a cup of water to drink, 
in my name, they shall have the reward. Imagine a just cup of water, they will have reward means for any person, but for the person who spoke comforting words to Jesus on the cross, he won't be taken to heaven, but he will get some special favor in Christ's kingdom. You see, dear brethren, this is what Jesus promised, not that he will be taken to heaven. So, dear brethren, so today we have seen some of the scriptures. How, yeah, you see, what is the real meaning? And none of these scriptures gives us the idea that the soul is immortal. So, if we study the Bible, Bible gives a total different picture. So, we should stop reading the Bible. We should study the Bible. There's a lot of difference between studying the Bible and reading the Bible. Today, many people just casually read the Bible without even concentrating. We should concentrate and read to understand the scriptures properly. So, there are still more, you see, uh, points to be covered, which we will be covering next week. Okay? So, till then, God bless you. But as of now, if somebody has got any doubts, you can ask. Anybody, any questions? PDF, brother, PDF, soul 2. Okay, I'll send it. Anybody, any yeah, other please. questions? <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, brother, actually, I bought uh, that uh, NKJV Bible, uh, study Bible, it is. Yeah. So, uh, it's not useful. No, don't purchase the NKJV Bible because in NKJV, there's a new King James Version translation. The translation is so poor that, uh, what do you say, the main understanding of the scriptures is totally liquefied. It is totally diluted. The real concept of understanding the scriptures is totally taken off. See, the best way to understand the Bible in English is first use the KJV Version. Why do we prefer the KJV version? Because the King James version was translated from the original manuscripts that were available at then. Okay? And all the other translations, they are translated through this King James version. So, if you are not able to understand the King James version, better is that along with that one, we can use ASV, American Standard Version. You see? So, that makes us to understand this Bible better or else along with KJV, you can have NIV, New International Version. So there also, you see the translations are apt limit, but not uh, NKJV. NKJV, try not to use it also. And, and you know, uh, not uh, many people prefer NKJV also. It's not so found uh, so uh, often in uh, many of the Bible uh, bookstores and all. But uh, uh, you can find NIV. You can find even RSV also. Bought, right? I already bought one. Okay. Good. No problem. If you bought it, you can you can use it for a study. But uh, I don't recommend it, brother. You can use RSV. If you're not able to understand KJV, you can use RSV. RSV. Yeah, RSV. RSV is also a good translation. Uh, ASV, RSV and NIV. Yes. Okay. KJV, King James Version. RSV, Revised Standard Version, NIV, New International Version, ASV, if you get American Standard Version. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll tell you. This, what I, I, bought it from, uh, this I bought it from that uh, OM book house uh, near uh, uh, Kayapuram, towards okay. Kayapuram. Okay, no problem. If you already bought it, not a problem. Next time you are buying, buying the Bible, just call me before buying the Bible, I'll tell you. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, you have KJV with you? No, I use KJV from mobile. Uh, um, I installed the KJV in mobile. Okay, I'll try to get you. Uh, see, that uh, we distributed some Bibles in Sisters' house. I'll try to get you on KJV, Bible, not an issue. Okay? And I think uh, what I'm reading from Bible is correct, no, brother? Sorry, mobile is correct, no? No, nah, mobile is correct, but use the Bibles. Why I'm telling you? See, when you use the Bibles and market in a Bibles, it is useful for always for your study. See, ah, okay. mobile is always an option. Oh, okay. But that is not a preference. Okay? Good. You are using the Bible. All the technologies are good. But always try to use a physical Bible, personal Bible for yourself. Okay. So tomorrow, remember, remind me, I will give you one KJV Bible English. Then I will get it from brother. Um, no problem. Actually, uh, uh, my request was uh, 